Do you have a nagging feeling that you're not as smart as everyone else thinks you are? Are you pretty sure your gifted label is just a house of cards ready to collapse as soon as everyone else catches on that you're a fraud? That's called imposter syndrome, when you're actually smart but you think you're not. And today, let's talk about how to change your internal monologue and reclaim your self-confidence. <laughs> Lisa, and I'm the mind behind Thrive Mind Gifted Coaching. On this channel and on my website, I help former gifted kids embrace your quirks and unleash your genius. Imposter syndrome is a fairly common issue among gifted adults, especially when they haven't found a path or a place where their skills are valued. It's a real paradox that we find ourselves in. You'd think that a person who learns quickly and solves problems creatively would clearly be viewed as an asset in most situations, but unfortunately, our society leans toward an anti-intellectual bias where smart people are viewed as nerds who are the opposite of cool and popular and as threats when they're lumped in with the elite who have come to take your job or tell you what to do. So when a gifted adult is marginalized in their career or in their situation, held back or pushed into a corner by people who don't understand them, the cognitive dissonance there is very hard to overcome. We start to believe that we may actually be bad, we may actually be the problem, and we start to doubt that we're actually smart at all. In addition, a lot of former gifted kids who are identified when they were young promised directly or indirectly that they were destined for greatness, but because they never reached the heights of wild success that they expected a gifted person should reach, they feel like they are failures. And I've talked about this before, but we are each allowed to choose our own goals and create our own definition of success. And you're not a failure if you haven't reached someone else's definition of success. But when you're immersed in this situation and this feeling, it's very hard to see that. And there are actually five more reasons why measurably smart, provably accomplished people are convinced that there has been some mistake and they're not gifted at all. But before we get into those, let's talk about what the voice of imposter syndrome sounds like inside your head. When someone says you did a great job, do you immediately say, oh no, it was nothing to do with me, and come up with reasons that your success was due to some other factor like luck or someone else's hard work? When you've clearly done something well, do you automatically compare yourself unfavorably to someone else and get discouraged that they do things better than you do? When you've made a minor mistake, do you obsess over it to the point where it ruins your enjoyment with the overall success of the whole project? When someone praises you, is your gut reaction to assume that they're lying and wonder what their ulterior motives are? Imposter syndrome is like an insidious snake constantly hissing in your brain that you stink. And these unceasing negative messages that are actually not true not only prevent you from enjoying your actual successes, but they prevent you from appreciating your significant skills and feeling confident enough to use them for good in the world. So why do so many gifted folks suffer from imposter syndrome? Here are five reasons why gifted adults can get stuck in this cycle of pressure to meet unrealistic standards, perceived failure, and plummeting self-doubt. The first thing that can cause gifted adults to have imposter syndrome is our early experiences. When we're young and starting to show signs of being very smart, we get a lot of praise, but we also tend to get a lot of oversimplified messages about what giftedness really is. Giftedness is not how much you know, but how your brain works. We experience the world more deeply, understand more quickly, and make connections that other people don't see. That's what we have going for us. We're not born knowing the alphabet or understanding how to do brain surgery. All those skills and talents come later after we apply our unique way of learning to a subject. But many of us heard our parents or teachers saying things that sound like we should already know everything, understand everything, and succeed without trying. Like, oh, she taught herself to read when she was three. She can figure anything out. Or he's been doing advanced math work since he was seven. He hardly needs to study. What we don't realize when we're young is that those messages are not the whole story. Life is a lot more complicated than that. These simplified narratives were not meant to explain everything that giftedness is. They're very small pieces of a very large puzzle. Giftedness means that your brain works differently and you can learn very quickly, but it doesn't mean that you never have to try hard to learn something or you never have to practice to achieve mastery of something. 
Looking back with an adult's perspective on those messages, we can see that those casually tossed out comments probably had another purpose, most likely because your parent was proud or was amazed at one piece of the puzzle that's your brain. But because we heard these messages so early, at an age when we didn't understand the nuances around the subject, we internalized them as is. And they're so ingrained in our personal narrative that we don't realize that we're basing our adult conclusions on a very simplistic, limited, childlike viewpoint. We don't realize that we're still judging ourselves by a standard that we didn't fully understand. Just because things came easily to us at one point in our lives doesn't mean they must always come easy or else we're not gifted. Life is more complicated than that. The second thing that can cause gifted adults to have imposter syndrome is our cultural expectations. Our society uses an inaccurate definition to explain giftedness. Despite decades of study and hundreds of experiments and research papers and experts who've been trying to explain our particular type of neurodivergence, the popular description of giftedness still sounds like, gifted people are smart in every subject, they never make mistakes or have to work hard and everything comes easy to them. I don't know about you, but I don't know anyone who fits that description. But it's easy to see how I might start to feel like I'm not gifted if I buy into that definition. Giftedness makes it easier for us to understand new information because we can see and absorb it in more detail and make connections between new pieces of information more quickly. But that doesn't mean that we never have to think or review or test theories or practice or get additional detail or ask for explanations. We still have to work and put effort in to learn and understand and accomplish things. You can hand someone who's musically talented a violin, but if you don't teach them to play it, and if they don't practice, they will not automatically become a virtuoso. Giftedness does not equate to immediate proficiency. But again, you can see how if I'm listening to society's messages that it does, I might start to doubt myself. The third thing that makes gifted adults suffer from imposter syndrome is a fear of failure. Sometimes we've internalized these messages from our past and from the world around us to such a degree that we've convinced ourselves that we are not allowed a single misstep and that all our worth is based on maintaining this veneer of perfection. We've convinced ourselves that smart people never make mistakes and that to prove we're smart, we must never make a single error. And when we do inevitably make a mistake, because everyone does, regardless of how smart they are, we start to beat ourselves up and that imposter voice starts saying, if you were actually smart, you would have done this perfectly. So that gifted label must have been a mistake. But it's believing this voice that is the mistake. Imagine if you were helping a child learn how to read and they were cruising along and really getting the hang of it. But then they read the word R-E-A-D as read instead of read. That wouldn't surprise you at all because the fact that two words can be spelled the same but pronounced differently isn't something a child would know unless he had been taught. So that mispronunciation isn't a mistake per se, but a step in the learning process. But when we're struggling with imposter syndrome, we don't judge ourselves by the same standards. We don't give ourselves the same grace. And that little voice is telling us that if we make a mistake, we have failed. And to the little voice, failure is the same as erasing the entire gifted label, which is patently untrue. Those are two different things. You can have an intensely perceptive brain that learns quickly and you can make mistakes. The fourth thing that gives gifted adults imposter syndrome is our toxic achievement culture. This is a tricky one. Our society has evolved into an environment that places an excessive emphasis on success, achievement, and productivity at the expense of well-being, mental health, and work-life balance. The societal definition of success has become this cutthroat race for high status, huge money, prestigious jobs and careers, and an inaccurate view of giftedness has merged with this toxic achievement culture to create an expectation that the top scholars in any class must automatically aim for these intensely competitive fields or they're not living up to their potential. Now, logically, every gifted person isn't gonna be temperamentally suited for a career in medicine, law, engineering, or finance. There should be no limitations on what area a gifted person chooses to focus her talent on. But if you've been trained to believe that your value lies in what you do, not who you are, and in your experience, you only receive praise and support when you operate within these narrow confines and expectations, 
you're very likely to launch yourself onto a path that's not right for you. And now you've just set yourself up for a very long struggle. If you're pursuing someone else's goals and the steps to the top aren't coming easy for you, it's not that you're not talented or you're not smart enough. It's that you're on the wrong journey. You're not an imposter. You're on the wrong path. And the fifth thing that pushes gifted adults toward imposter syndrome is the fact that high performance can sometimes be our only source of connection. Growing up as a gifted person, we often found ourselves as the odd ones out. Maybe we were the only gifted kid in our class or in our grade, or maybe we were having trouble finding friends who understood and accepted our gifted quirks. It can be very lonely being a gifted kid. Then once we started our careers, we were often hoping that our achievement could be the key that unlocked the door to finally being accepted. If we did well in a job, maybe we could become the person that everyone would look up to or likes or wants to be around. So we set up a situation where we start to believe that we must do everything as perfectly as possible so we can get the appreciation and connection that we have always craved. And when we do stumble, as normal people do, we worry that we just blew our chance and then we redouble our efforts to be as useful and reliable and as perfect as possible, which just makes things worse. So there are a lot of reasons why gifted folks can suffer from imposter syndrome, but what can we do about it? You can overcome imposter syndrome with these steps. Number one, revisit your origin story and look at your core beliefs about giftedness with an adult's vantage point. Think about where you learned your ideas about what gifted people are like and why those messages might have been inaccurate. Next, understand your triggers. Sit down and think about when you feel most like an imposter. Is it when you hear criticism or when someone challenges your conclusions or when you're assigned to a new project or when you see someone else's success? Knowing what sets off your own cascade of doubt will help you figure out what tools you need to stop that before it starts. Then think about what kind of imposter syndrome you have. Do you feel like you need to be perfect or a natural genius or that you can never ask for help? When you have this piece of information, you want to take that and think about people you know who you believe are smart and ask yourself whether they are also limited by the same expectations you've been putting on yourself. Was Steven Spielberg always perfect? Did Walt Disney build his empire completely alone? Now you can start to bring a dose of reality to your inner monologue. Then remind yourself that you are actually smart. List off your accomplishments, celebrate your wins, and remind yourself of the things that you've done that you never thought you could do. Then put a name to your fears, surround yourself with support, and remind yourself regularly of life's truths, like there will always be obstacles and no one is perfect. That's a quick summary. If you'd like some help with the process of overcoming imposter syndrome, I've linked my downloadable toolkit in the description below. This is a 20 page PDF of worksheets and exercises that take you through the steps I just listed, along with printable affirmations to stick on your mirror to remind you of your value, self-confidence prompts, printable journal pages to help you keep on track, all kinds of goodies. Imposter syndrome is an illusion and it's well within your power to break that illusion and feel confident again and ready to go share your gifts with the world. And while you're at it, I'd like to invite you to join my private Facebook group. Wayfinders is a supportive online community of former gifted kids who are all trying to find a path where our gifts and passions align with our purpose. Look for links to the Thrive Mind Gifted Coaching website and the Wayfinders Facebook group in the description below, and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Thanks for watching.